Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. We also have a Telegram group which you can join to access all with, for all lecture related information. We have a Google Drive where the PDF of all lectures are available and there's a master integration key by which you can navigate between the PDF as well as all the YouTube lectures. These are the disclaimers. We are with phase three, which is recorded pathology lectures. And today we have a very interesting topic, which is called the game of glioma. And to talk on that, we have Dr. Dheeraj Chinnam. He's an MD pathology from PGI Chandigarh. He's a consultant pathologist in Malhotra Super Speciality Hospital with multiple publications in national and international journals. His special interest is neuropathology, hematopathology and molecular pathology. He's been awarded the second place in the Nipsicon Quiz 2019 and the Best Paper Award in Nipsicon 2021. So over to you Dr. Dheeraj for this interesting talk on Game of Glioma. Thank you so much. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Dheeraj Chinnam. I did my MD Pathology from PGI Chandigarh and I'm working at Malhotra Super Speciality Hospital, Baddi. I have titled my talk as Game of Gliomas, Grade versus Genes. You will understand the reasoning behind this title as I guide you through the fascinating evolution of grading of gliomas and the evolution of WHO classification of CNS tumors. With the release of fifth edition, we have seen significant updates and refinements that merit a closer examination. Join me as we explore the nuances and implications of these developments in the field of neuro-oncology. We all know that neuroglia comprises of astrocytes, oligodendrocytes, ependymal cells and microglial cells. Gliomas are named based on the way the tumor cells appear under the microscope and then graded using various morphological criteria. Tumors with elongated hyperchromatic nuclei and irregular borders are called as astrocytomas. While oligodendroglyomas have monomorphic cells, they have round regular nuclei with perinuclear halos. And when the tumors have both types of cells, historically they were called as oligoastrocytomas. These tumors are graded based on multiple morphological criteria. Grade 1 tumors are well circumscribed, they have low proliferation index and typically do not recur once completely removed. When these tumors start infiltrating into the adjacent parenchyma, they are called as diffusely infiltrating gliomas or grade 2. Finally, grade 3 and grade 4 criteria can be remembered by famous mnemonic AMEN. Grade 3 or anaplastic tumors have atypia and mitosis and grade 4 tumors along with these have endovascular proliferation and or necrosis. For example, the tumors of astrocytic lineages are characterized based on grading as grade 1 pilocytic astrocytomas, grade 2 diffuse astrocytomas, grade 3 anaplastic astrocytomas and grade 4 glioblastomas. Therefore, the WHO classification of CMS tumors prior to 2016 are based on these principles of identifying and grading a tumor based on morphology. However, the problem with the grading system is it is not good at stratifying the risk. We have assumed that aggressive the tumor cells looks under the microscope, the poorer the prognosis, which is not true clinical. If we can look at these Kaplan-Meier survival curves, with this morphological grading, we are able to stratify risk consistently only in glioblastomas and other tumor entities and grades overlap too much and doesn't give us a clear idea about outcome. Moving forward to 2008, a subset of glioblastomas that have IDH mutations were discovered and these tumors were seen in young, younger population and they have a better prognosis than IDH wild type glioblastomas. In a follow-up paper, they discovered that IDH mutations are the most common type of mutations in low-grade gliomas and IDH mutant gliomas have a better prognosis at every grade level. But the most surprising finding is that the grade 4 mutated IDH glioblastomas have better prognosis when compared to grade 3 IDH wild types. Grade 4s are surviving better than grade 3s. This emphasizes the problem with relying solely on morphological grading. Going ahead in 2012, 
Histone mutations were discovered in pediatric high-grade gliomas. The intriguing fact about these tumors is that the locus of H3 histone mutation dictates the location where the tumor arises. The tumor with K27 locus mutation arises in midline, whereas tumors with G34 locus mutation arise within the hemispheres. H3K27M mutations predominantly arise in the midline in almost all age groups with more predilection to children less than 10 years and have a dismal prognosis. The presence of H3K27M mutation in combination with loss of H3K27ME3 is diagnostic of this tumor. The mechanism behind loss of H3K27ME3 expression is truly fascinating. Histones are proteins that are rich in basic amino acids such as histidine, arginine, and lysine. The histone tails are especially rich in lysine and undergo epigenetic modifications like acetylation, methylation, or ubiquitination. Specifically in H3 histone, lysine at 27th position is methylated. This process is catalyzed by the DNA methyl transferase EZH2, a subunit of the PRC2 complex. This results in normal cells and tumor cells displaying nuclear expression of H3K27ME3, which can be appreciated through IHC analysis. However, in diffuse midline gliomas with H3K27M mutation, the lysine at the 27th position is replaced by methionine, leading to the trapping of PRC2 complex and an inability to methylate subsequent lysine residues. This phenomena can also be observed through IHC analysis, and when a tumor exhibits this mutation, it concurrently demonstrates loss of methylation. In 2015, the data of comprehensive genomic analysis of low-grade gliomas were published in New England Journal of Medicine. The researchers were able to divide the entire cohort into two subgroups, the IDH mutant and the IDH wild type. IDH mutated tumors could be further subdivided based upon the presence or absence of 1P19Q codilation. IDH mutated tumors with the presence of 1P19Q codilations are morphologically oligodendrogliomas and they have activating mutation in the third promoter region. IDH mutant tumors with absent 1P19Q codilations are astrocytomas morphologically and they have inactivating mutations in TP53 and ATRX. While the IDH wild type tumors have EGFR amplifications and deletions in P10 genes, the oligoastrocytomas did not have any morphological correlate. They are either astrocytomas or oligodendrogliomas based on their molecular alterations. So this entity became obsolete after this. You may be wondering about the implications of these molecules. Just by incorporating two molecular markers, we can achieve a magical transformation where this entire clutter is elegantly separated into these clean non-overlapping curves with clear clinical outcomes. The accuracy of risk prediction has vastly improved with oligodendrogliomas now boasting the best outcomes while IDH wild-type glioblastoma and IDH wild-type low-grade glioma suffer from inferior prognosis. This is a testament to the power of molecular analysis in revolutionizing our understanding and treatment of complex diseases. So, neuropathology was dominated by morphology until 2016, but its position is challenged by emergence of molecules capable of predicting clinical outcomes with greater accuracy. Therefore, 2016 classification introduced molecular testing and recommended integrated reports combining both histopathological and molecular information in a tiered diagnostic format. H3K27M mutated midline gliomas were recognized as separate entity and these tumors have a poor prognosis with two-year survival rate of less than 10%. The presence of this H3K27M mutation is enough to classify this tumor as grade 4 
irrespective of the morphological features. Therefore, for the first time, WHO has introduced a molecular marker to grade a tumor. This marked the beginning of a departure from solely relying on traditional morphological grading systems and the start of a novel approach of molecular grading that accurately predict clinical out outcomes. However, there was insufficient literature available at that time to classify H3G34 mutated hemispheric gliomas as distinct entity. After 2016, the molecular data that was being published was so extensive. In 2017, a group of leading neuropathologists and neuro-oncologists have formed a consortium to inform molecular and practical approaches to CNS tumor taxonomy, not official WHO, shortly called as C-Impact Now. In 2021, this has been, now has been updated to now official WHO. 17 to 2020 a total of seven updates are published and i'll provide you with the summary of the most important update see in fact now update 3 talks about the drawbacks in calling idh wild type glioblastomas in this era of stereotactic biopsies the tissue bits we get might not have mitosis necrosis and vascular proliferations to label them as glioblastomas Moreover, since most of the CNS tumors and all normal healthy tissues are IDH wild type, we need more meaningful evidence for an ac accurate diagnosis. So consequently, this update states that any glioma with EGFR amplification, chromosome 7 gain or chromosome 10 loss or third promoter mutation is classified as IDH wild type glioblastomas irrespective of morphological evidence. Then what about IDH mutant astrocytomas? Is there any survival difference among grade 2 and grade 3s? Absolutely not. Do we have any molecular markers to identify the inferior outcome? Of course we do. Out of many molecular markers tested, CDK and 2A2B homozygous deletions has the strongest evidence until now. IDH mutated grade 3, grade 4 tumors that have CDK and 2A2B homozygous deletion have inferior survival rate in comparison to tumors that do not exhibit this deletion. Hence, it is introduced as a molecular marker in identifying poorly performing IDH mutant astrocytomas along with morphological grading. 2017, data on comprehensive genomic profiling in pediatric low-grade gliomas and high-grade gliomas were published. In contrast to adult gliomas, which have a similar mutational profiles in low-grade and high-grade gliomas, pediatric gliomas are characterized by MAPK pathway mutations in low-grade gliomas and histone and P53 mutations in high-grade gliomas. As a result of these findings, CIMPACT now update for recommended recognizing diffuse astrocytoma MIP or MIPL1 altered and diffuse low-grade glioma MAPK pathway altered gliomas as separate entities. All of the important C impact now updates have been incorporated into the new WHO classification along with many additional updates that I will cover subsequently. Gliomas, glioneuronal tumors and neuronal tumors have all been grouped together into a single category and the WHO has separated adult and pediatric gliomas as they have distinct mutation profiles and further pediatric low-grade gliomas and high-grade gliomas were also separated due to their different set of mutations. Gliomas, glioneuronal and neuronal tumor comprised of adult type diffuse gliomas, pediatric type diffuse low grade and high grade gliomas, circumscribed astrocytic gliomas, glioneuronal and neuronal tumors and ependymal tumors. With regards to circumscribed astrocytic glioma, a new entity called high grade astrocytoma with phyloid features has been added. Astroblastomas are now addressed by their genetical alterations, specifically those affecting M11. Turning to the new entities, phyllocytic astrocytomas of posterior fossa have increased mitosis, microvascular proliferation, and necrosis. These tumors have distinct DNA methylation profiles and they have aggressive molecular alterations like deletions in CDK and 2A and 2B. As a result of these findings, these tumors are now recognized as high-grade astrocytomas with pyloid features. Pediatric type diffuse low-grade gliomas have three new types, 
diffuse astrocytoma MIP or MIP L1 altered and diffuse low grade gliomas MAP K pathway altered. These two new entities have been discussed in the C impact update for earlier. And additionally, the new entity that was added was polymorphous low grade neuroepithelial tumor of the young. Polymorphous low grade neuroepithelial tumor of the young is shortly called as PLANTI. As the name suggests, it is a low grade neuroepithelial tumor seen in pediatric population and clinically they present with epilepsy. The tumor exhibits a wide range of morphologies, including oligodendroglioma like astrocytic, fibrillary astrocytic, and perivascular arrangement resembling ependymomas. And most of these tumors show intense expression for CD34 and they have PRAF and FGFR alteration. However, these tumors have a good clinical outcome. Diffuse pediatric type high grade gliomas have three new types diffuse hemispheric gliomas H3G34 mutant, diffuse pediatric type high grade gliomas that are wild type for IDH and histone proteins, and infant type of hemispheric gliomas. Diffuse midline gliomas, the name is changed to H3K27 altered to recognize all the mechanisms by which H3K27 trimethylation is lost. After 2016, when diffuse midline gliomas are stained with H3K27M and H3K27ME3, a minority of midline gliomas showed loss of H3K27ME3 without associated H3K27M mutation. This phenomena was more frequently seen in posterior fossa ependymomas. In our research at PGI, we studied a cohort of 90 posterior fossa ependymomas and found that more than 95% of posterior fossa A ependymomas showed H3K27 trimethylation loss without an associated K27M mutation. It has been reported in other studies that these tumors overexpress a protein called CXR67, but its function was not known at that time. In 2019, an article published in Nature showed that CXR67 inhibits EZH2, a DNA methyl transferase subunit of PRC2 complex, thereby preventing methylation of the histone residues. Consequently, CXR67 is renamed as EZH2 inhibitory protein, shortly called as EZHIP. Hence, in fifth edition, diffuse midline gliomas with H3 wild type and EZHIP overexpression has been recognized and are considered as WHO grade 4 with an equally poor prognosis like H3K27M mutant tumors. Another new type that is added to this category is diffuse midline glioma EGFR mutant. These are bithylamic gliomas that have mutations in EGFR oncogene, specifically in frame insertion in exon 20 that codes for tyrosine kinase domain and missense mutation in exon 7. Diffuse hemispheric gliomas with H3G34 mutations which were discovered in 2012 and have finally received their due credits and are recognized as a new entity in 2021. These tumors are seen in adolescent and young adults and morphologically resemble high-grade astrocytomas and sometimes embryonal tumors. These tumors are characterized by loss of ATRX and overexpression of TP53. They have a distinct DNA methyl methylation profile and these tumors have intermediate prognosis with survival rates falling between the worst IDH wild type glioblastomas and IDH mutant grade 4 astrocytomas. Diffuse pediatric type high grade gliomas that are wild type for IDH and histone genes have three distinct DNA methylation subtypes RTK1 RTK2 and MICN. The largest subtype MICN has high frequency of MICN amplification and the worst prognosis. The second largest subtype RTK1 shows enrichment for PDGFR alpha amplification and has an intermediate prognosis. 
the smallest subtype RTK2, which has EGFR amplifications and third promoter mutation, has the best prognosis of all three. Pigment type hemispheric gliomas are seen in children less than one, one year, and these tumors have receptor tyrosine kinase fusions in ALK, ROS, ENTREC, and MET, similar to adenocarcinomas of lung. As these fusions can be therapeutically targeted, they have a better outcome than high grade gliomas in older children. To summarize, there are two types of high grade gliomas based on age the adult type and the pediatric type. Adult type high grade gliomas can be either IDH mutant or IDH wild type. According to the recent WHO classification, the term glioblastoma is reserved exclusively for the most aggressive glioma that is IDH wild type, while the previously called IDH mutant glioblastoma should be addressed as IDH mutant astrocytomas grade 4. Pediatric type high grade gliomas can be classified based on the location into midline tumors and hemispheric tumors. Midline tumors are further categorized based on the mechanism by which H3K27ME3 is lost. In diffuse midline glioma H3K27M mutations, H3K27ME3 is lost due to mutation that converts lysine to methionine at K27 position of H3 histone. In diffuse midline gliomas that are wild type to H3K27, the ME3 is lost due to overexpression of EZH2 inhibitory protein. And finally, we have diffuse midline gliomas with EGFR mutant. Hemispheric tumors are further classified based on the age, group and genetic alteration. In adolescent and young adults, we have diffuse hemispheric gliomas H3G34 mutants. These are high-grade astrocytic tumors that have ATRX loss and TP53 overexpression and they do not have IDH mutations. And in children, we have diffuse pediatric type high-grade gliomas that are wild type for histones and IDH. And based upon the DNA methylation, there are three subgroups, RTK1, RTK2, and NMIC amplification. And finally, the infantile hemispheric gliomas, they have fusions in tyrosine kinase receptors involving ALK, ROS, ENTREC, and MET. Switching to glioneuronal and neuronal tumors, three new types have been added to this group. Diffuse glioneuronal tumors with oligodendroglioma-like features and nuclear clusters, mixoid glioneuronal tumors, and multinodular vacuolating neuronal tumors. Diffuse glioneuronal tumor with oligodendroglioma-like features and nuclear clusters, shortly called as PGONC. This is a provisional entity based on DNA methylation profile. These tumors are seen in pediatric patients and histologically they resemble oligodendrogliomas with clear cell features, vascular proliferations and nuclear clusters resembling like pennies arranged on the plate and they are characterized by recurrent monosomy 14. Mixoid glioneuronal tumors are low-grade tumors that typically arise in the septum pellucidum or periventricular white matter. They morphologically resemble either disembryoplastic neuroepithelial tumor or rosette forming glioneuronal tumors with prominent mixoid stroma, floating neurons and neurocytic rosettes. However, they have a characteristic dinucleotide mutation at codon 385 of PDGFR alpha oncogene which replaces lysine with isoleucine or lysine. Multinodular vacuolating neuronal tumor of the cerebrum is a low-grade neuronal neoplasm of the cerebral hemispheres, usually in the temporal and frontal lobes. These tumors are composed of small to medium neuronal cells arranged in nodules involving the deep cortex and subcortical white matter. They show prominent intracytoplasmic and stromal vacuolation. 
these tumors have alterations in the MAPK pathway. There have been significant changes in the classification of ependymomas based on their location and genetic. Supratentorial ependymomas are characterized by fusions involved in the genes ZFTA and YAP1. Posterior fossa ependymomas do not have recurrent fusions like supratentorial ependymomas but have epigenetic changes in the histone genes. This has led to the classification of posterior fossa ependymomas into posterior fossa A and posterior fossa B subtype based on their methylation profiling and H3K27 ME3 expressions on immunohistochemistry. In the spinal location, a subset of aggressive spinal tumors with anemic amplifications have been identified. Mixopapillary ependymoma is now considered as WHO grade 2 rather than grade 1 as its likelihood of recurrence is now understood to understood to be similar to the conventional spinal ependymomas. Additionally, the papillary, clear cell and tannocytic morphologies are no longer listed as subtypes of ependymomas but are instead included as patterns in histopathological description. Supratentorial ependymomas ZFTA fusions were initially called as Relay C11 or 95 fusion positive tumors in 2016. Later, fusions involving C11 or 95 without relay were also reported, highlighting the oncogenicity of this gene. As a result, the C-impact now update 7 changed the nomenclature of these tumors to supratentorial ependymomas with C11 or 95 fusions. Additionally, this gene has been renamed as ZFTA by the Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee. Consequently, for the 2021 WHO classification, the term supratentorial ependymoma ZFTA fusion positive have been suggested. These tumors are seen both in children and adults. They arise extraventricularly within the hemispheres. Morphologically, they are high grade. ZFTA and relay is the most common fusion and other non-relay partners are YAP1 and COVA1 and alpha catenin. On IHC, these tumors express L1 cam, cyclin D1, and relay. The clinical outcome, according to the latest WHO, is unclear because the initial retrospective studies have shown a poor outcome, but the prospective studies have shown a better outcome. Thanks to the privilege of studying at PGI and being blessed with an outstanding mentor like Kirti Ma'am, I was able to work on 200 ependymomas. This was one of our case in the supratentorial location where we can see these tumor cells arranged perivascularly and these tumor cells have membranous positivity for L1 cam and nuclear positivity for cyclin D1 and P65. On C Sanger sequencing, these tumors have ZFTF fusions specifically involving the exon 3 of ZFTA and exon 2 of Relay. In the cohort from supratentorial location, ZFTA and its three surrogate markers could predict a poor clinical outcome. Supratentorial ependymomas with YAP1 fusions are seen in females less than 3 years. They arise within the ventricles. They are large tumors with multinodularity and cystic components. They have anaplastic features and they show loss of chromosome 22q and focal alteration in chromosome 11p and x. Posterior fossa ependymomas are classified into posterior fossa A and posterior fossa B based on DNA methylation profiling. Posterior fossa A tumors are seen in infants. They are characterized by loss of H3K27 ME3 on immunohistochemistry due to overexpression of easy H2 inhibitory protein. These tumors have very poor prognosis. Whereas posterior fossa B tumors are seen in older children and adults and they have retained H3K27 ME3 and they have very good prognosis. This is an ependymoma from posterior fossa classified as posterior fossa A subtype due to the loss of H3K27 ME3 caused by the overexpression of EZH2 inhibitory protein. 
This ependymoma from posterior fossa is classified as posterior fossa B because it has retained the H3K27 ME3 staining. Spinal ependymomas with Mikan amplification are aggressive tumors that are seen in adults with median age of 32. They are high grade tumors that arise in the cervical and thoracic spine. They present with diffuse leptomeningeal spread throughout the CNS and they have a very poor prognosis. Spinal ependymomas with enmic amplification are associated with the poorest prognosis as they are the most aggressive subtype among all ependymomas. In fact, they are even more aggressive than the posterior fossa A and supratendorial ZFTA ependymomas. Out of the 22 new types that have been added to the recent WHO classification, 14 belong to the category of gliomas, glioneuronal tumors and neuronal tumors and we have briefly discussed each type. So the marvel of modern medicine lies in demystifying the mutations and molecules behind the morphology. I thank you very much for your attention.